So let's uh, let's move on to our next speaker, uh, Philip. Um, I'm gonna future outlook. Okay, that we had. So, Philip, welcome. How are you doing, Johan? I'm Hello, good. Buddy. You? Uh, yeah, good. Thank you. Ah, uh, everything's fine. Um, so, um, a bit on the same area as uh, before, all of the changes in automotive. Philip now will focus a bit more on what is the impact of all of this uh, a bit. And maybe, Philip, we can also do it in the a, a question at the end because you've got a good view on what happens globally, happens in Europe, but also specifically as well in UK. And we can handle this now at the end or in the uh, a panel because I think it's interesting. Is there any difference in UK with all of the aspects that you will uh, mention, but we can handle this a bit later. So up to you, Philip. Thanks a lot for your sure. input already now. Thank you. And hopefully you can see the, the screen there. So as Johan said there, I'm Philip Northard. Um, I'm the Insight and Strategy Director here at Cox Automotive, who are part of the uh, and part of the UK, European and international team in, within that global marketplace. And, and today, as, as Johan said that, I want to sort of share some thoughts around some of the, the trends influencing our sector. And, and along with Steve and Mark there, whom we've just heard from, as to, you know, why we, we try and understand what this means going forward as we as we come out of the, the pandemic and we start to see supply return to, to the market. Um, but to begin with, first, I want to sort of those that may not be aware of who we are. Um, let me just tell you a little bit about Cox Automotive and where we operate, more importantly. So as you can see there, I won't go into detail on this uh, on this slide, but as you can see, we're truly a, a global brand. And, and we, but we still remain a, a family run run business with 120 years of, of history of innovation and and embracing sort of the next big uh, market trends in, in the automotive sector. You know, we've got 40,000 clients globally and more than 34,000 team members. And we operate in 220 locations. So as you can see there, uh, a very significant footprint and a, and a very good prominence in, in the UK and European markets, as well as many international and global markets as we, as we start to look at how these touch points of defleet remarketing retail operations for the for the manufacturer and the fleet and and dealer customers that we we operate with so without going into a great deal of detail i hope that gives you a little bit of a snapshot of the uh, the size and, and scale and, and and of the business and hopefully you can see why we we feel we can talk about what's going on in the the sector so as I say there, we, we see in our role as a, uh, to enable our customers to succeed in, in what is, and, and as both Mark and Steve have talked about there, an increasingly digital wholesale and retail ecosystem. You now, there are a large number of, of uh, converges factor in computer, contributing to this uh, complexity as we move forward. You know, some factors are influencing all sectors, not just the, the automotive. So, you know, we, we're more recently talking about inflation, not just in the UK and Europe, but significantly in the, the US. More recently with the, the conflict in, in Ukraine. And, and obviously we talk more about that climate change, Web3, 5G, and, and what that means for, for our industry as we, we move forward. Now, these factors offer both threats and opportunities. Um, so thinking about the automotive sector specifically, there are five mega trends that we believe are, are driving change. And these are manifesting in, in very different ways. So we know consumer behavior, consumer shopping has, has already been changing in, in a pre-pandemic environment. And it's clear that the impact of COVID and, and the lockdowns and restrictions that we felt right across the, the global market has significantly accelerated many of these consumer behaviors, particularly in the, the online space. We have new retail models, as, as both Mark and, and Steve have touched on there, more direct selling. Um, and in relation to the consumer, that's not just new cars, it's also significantly in the used vehicle marketplace. And as Steve has touched on there, we've got new entrants and disruptors. 
And clearly the landscape of the dealer and OEM space is, is changing. The disruptors, you know, we believe may be entering from a digital position, but then following up with a physical infrastructure. And those with a physical infrastructure are obviously moving very quickly into that digital space. And one view is that, you know, we've just, they're basically going to come together at, at the end and, and meet there in, in the middle, just coming at it from totally different di directions. So, you know, we, we, we're interested to see where that uh, moves going forward. And, you know, as we talk about what that means for our sector, you know, we're talking a lot about ACES, the, the onset of autonomous, connected, electric and shared vehicles. And, and Steve was just touching on that a little bit there about the, how the market is going to change as we, we start to think about the vehicles being more connected, the electric vehicle sector, and obviously how those vehicles will be shared. But truly, it is a transformation of that, that vehicle marketplace. Digitization of the ecosystem is not just in retail, but also in the wholesale environment as we move to a more data automation and AI-led process. And we're creating this emergence of what we would call that digital marketplace with that physical infrastructure meets that digital ecosystem in the future. And finally, a new form of fleet environment emerges as we move into the mobility environment with the continual growth and appetite towards subscription, a more flexible ownership of the market and the growth of multi-user fleet. So we've got a lot of things to think about. And, you know, I think we've got to sort of think about what that means today, where we're moving forward. But more importantly, as, as again, Steve and Mark have touched on there, where, where we're coming from and some of the challenges we face from the recent years. So before we can understand what the future landscape of the vehicle sector supply uh, may look like, and the used vehicle park will more importantly look like, we need to look back at some of the impacts we've experienced in, in recent years with the trends influence in our sector. Uh, I've just talked to you about there. So looking at production, you know, we've all seen the headlines with factory shutdowns, restrictions of supply, either as a direct consequence of the pandemic, the impact it had on the supply chain, and the subsequent changes and strategies the OEMs are taking at their level whether that is an entire focus on electrification, a move towards a more profitable or premium model, or remain focused on volume. But as you can see on the chart, you know, when we look at 2019 and 2018 together, compare that with 2020 and 2021, globally, the, the sector has lost 31 million vehicles from its production. And we're still down year to date compared to previous years. Now, although we believe production will start to increase as supply starts to get better and the market starts to open up again, this will significantly impact the sector for years to come. We're never going to make that deficit up of 31 million vehicles, even if we return to a 90 million production marketplace, and which, as both Mark and, and Steve have alluded to, will we ever return to that 90-plus production vehicle marketplace as we move into this transition towards electrification and the way the OEM strategies are starting to change. So looking a little bit further down and what does that mean for, for us in terms of Europe and, and the UK? You know, we're significantly down on registration. So yes, we've had the production drop. That's hit the global market at all levels. But actually more locally, you know, as you can see there, when we're comparing the five European markets with Germany, France, Italy, Spain and the UK, already in that two year period, we've lost 6.5 million new vehicle registrations. And already the indications are that year to date in the first quarter, we're another 1.1 million down just across those five marketplaces. So we're clearly aware that the order banks are healthy. You know, although, you know, we have lost this many registrations, we know that profitability is there. Even today, we're seeing some very positive profitability results from, from many of the, the larger retail operators and, and OEMs. But, we you know, we've got to understand what does this mean for us as a sector? You know, we'll see the steady, slowly return, slower than many did expect at the start of the year, you know, with, with the recent conflict in, in Ukraine and the challenges that has had 
in uh, supply chain and we know there's been challenges in Shanghai with with factories as well so you know we are starting to see a few challenges hit us in this year that many didn't expect as we entered this 2022. So with production volumes down declining you know we spoke a lot earlier about the reports of the OEMs focusing on profitability premium models away from a more volume mainstream market I'll ask the question, you know, and the question that um, we, Steve was just point, mentioning there as to when the manufacturers will return to normality of, of volume throughput, a lot of pressure on there. But will we return to a push market or will we remain a pull marketplace? As we know, you know, in a pull market, in a high demand marketplace, it's been proven that when we step away from pre-reg, heavy tactical registrations, heavy D fleet, they're not being, and, and these unattainable targets that have been put on the dealer sector, both in the UK and across Europe, it's not profitable for both the dealer and the OEM. So clearly, we know that focusing on profitability is the best result for many of the OEMs and manufacturers as we move forward. Clearly, it's a demonstrator that the demand-driven marketplace is a more positive result for pro profitability. But as I say, many commentators believe that the sector wouldn't have learnt that when supply starts to return, will again become a push marketplace. However, I believe personally that, you know, we'll, as Steve has alluded to there, some manufacturers will return to volume. Some, clearly their strategies are now focused on profitability and not volume into the marketplace as they start to believe that, the challenges that they're facing in the supply market, the challenges they're facing getting raw material for the, the batteries and requirements of that electrification marketplace, they cannot do the volume that they are doing today going forward. So they need to think differently about how they run their factories and how they collaborate on those. So with the used vehicle market park of approximately 330 million across the UK and the EU, what will the knock-on effect be with a loss of 31 million vehicles? What does this mean for us in the used vehicle marketplace and the remarketing in the fleet sector? We've already seen an acceleration of used vehicle values throughout the last 12 months with demand outstripping supply significantly. That is starting to ease with the challenges in the consumer market today. You know, we're seeing a lot of pressure on the cost of living, inflation, interest rate rises, a lot of pressure there. Got disruptors entering the used vehicle space. We now got rental operators that are now being becoming significant used car buyers. Now we already know that rental operators were used car buyers in small numbers, but now they're becoming high volume buyers as they try to get volume into their rental market that they're not getting from the manufacturers today and may not get for the next year or two. So we're becoming a very competitive market. And as you say there, you know, the, we've got a few challenges as we move forward. You know, we've seen the impact in the 0 to 6 month marketplace. We're now starting to see it in the 0 to 12 month marketplace. So as we move forward, we'll start to see this lack of supply those vehicles that have never been registered, never been put onto that fleet and business sector, not registered through the rental market and therefore generating the D fleet, we're not seeing those vehicles return in any significant volumes to the used vehicle marketplace. So consumer demand for used cars will remain as we get through some of these short-term challenges around cost of living, etc. But I believe that we'll, we'll work our way through that and, and demand will, will return. You know, we'll start to get products into the fleet market as we work through some of those supply challenges. Rental market will be slow. It will be very, um, very hit and miss of who gets products and when and where from. But we'll start to see the life cycle change. You know, as we move towards subscription, usership, and as both Mark and, and Steve just talked about there, you know, how those vehicles are going onto fleet and where they return to, particularly as the manufacturers move into that agency model space. You know, we talk about that re retail landscape. It is going to start to change very quickly as we, as we move out of the, the pandemic. We will, without doubt, see 
and experience a remarketing revolution. Now, as many earlier trends start to play out, we'll start to see this in, in the upstream and downstream market with a shift towards a demand, digitization, competition, both within from new and from used marketplace, our own industry increased towards a more technical and data-driven dependent marketplace, and how we appraise and value part of exchanges will start to change. You know, we look at these new entrances into the new vehicle marketplace that have no physical infrastructure. They will become reliant on third parties for their appraisal, movement, and valuation of those vehicle play, vehicles into the market. You know, we don't that we'll see ever increasing dependency on that third party solutions. We know the fleet market is evolving. The life cycle strategies are starting to change. No longer have we, and we haven't done for some time, operate in that fixed two, three, or even four year life cycle renewal as we move in that usership environment. Users are, are demanding a more flexible process and ownership. Retailers are changing either to meet a new form of retailer or to meet the new form of buyer. To support how the market is changing, we recently conducted a, a study with franchise dealers across the market. Now, although this is very much um, a UK centric survey, and with 58% of the respondents cited that there are changes in the stocking profile will change permanently. You know, we know that the retail market has been constrained of stock. We know that they've started to look at older high mileage vehicles. We know that many retailers have entered brands that they wouldn't normally operate within. Positively, you know, we've seen it where they've entered into the electrification and um, alternative fuel market that they may have been a little bit nervous from previously. They now moved into that sector because they've needed to to get that required stock. You know, whether this is the, that, that increase, but it is going to stay. You know, many of the retailers saying that, you know, they are going to stay. This is a permanent shift to their stocking profile. Um, you know, you think about this was repeated in Mannheim Express over in, in Germany when we asked the dealers there. They've, we've seen the same intelligence coming out of some of them European markets as well. So without doubt, the used vehicle park is stuck in its behaviours of our sector are changing as both volumes and the type of vehicles entering the vehicle park starts to change as a consequence of short production and the shift towards electrification. And not really going into the detail that, that Mark went into earlier on in, with regards to that, that fuel share, but as I say, it's not just the shortage of volume that is also on the change. It's the type of vehicles that are entering the used vehicle remarketing space. We all need to look at the fuel split and how that's changed towards electric alternative fuels. Now, while much of this is driven by initiatives of the manufacturer and local governments, it clearly illustrates that the fuel landscape of the used market is on the change. It's accelerated significantly since 2019. Part of that will be down to supply of the petrol and diesels, where some of the electric models were readily, more readily available. But clearly, the shift towards a more dominant alternative fuel market is, is moving, and it's moving very quickly. We ask ourselves a question. Is our sector ready? Do we have the infrastructure? in place is the fleet market ready you know we've had to move fleet markets had to move very quickly into electric through availability of product um, but actually when those vehicles start to return as a used market is the demand do we have the expertise the knowledge and the skills to remarket those vehicles when they start to return we are seeing them already return but they're in small numbers this will start to turn, particularly as we start to move to, towards 2023, 2024, and significantly towards 2025, as these fleets that have been going out in the recent years start to return as used, vehicle, used vehicles. So we've got to understand, you know, are we ready for this? Are we ready for the level of volumes? 
you know, can we cope with this skills that are requirement? Here in the UK, we've been having close conversations with the UK government about trying to ensure that our skill gap is filled, that technicians are on the green agenda and they are supported so we can get this recruitment taking place and, and using that green energy support for this training and expertise in the used vehicle marketplace. You know, we're going to see this serious level of, of battery investment, maintenance, recycling, disposal, charging infrastructure and logistic support start to change very quickly. And without going into heavy detail on this, you know, um, Steve shared some some snippets. I think what I'm trying to demonstrate here is clearly, you know, we talk about this move towards agency, you know, the headlines are on a daily basis, move towards agency. What does that mean for the existing dealer network, whether it's the OEMs, you know, do they have the correct robust blueprints to, to make this transition? What are we going to start to see as we move forward? Increased collaborations between partners within the fleet, leasing and OEM sector as we start to look how we can work closer together to supply vehicles into the marketplace and meet demand. Try and maximise those that knowledge and efficiencies as we transition to face these trends as we described earlier. One thing is for certain, you know, back to the one opening statement there, these global trends will create both threats and opportunities for our sector as we navigate our way through. There's going to be many known unknowns. You know, we know what's coming. Question is, how will it impact us? What will we start to see? We look at the new entrances. What will that mean as we move forward? What will happen when the manufacturers move away from just in agency modeling new, start to do more in that used vehicle space as we move forward? And as we say, we currently face constraints around supply, transition towards electrification, and hydrogen is more and more talked about now. And whereas that's green, grey, or blue hydrogen, when will this be? OEMs are talking more about that future of hydrogen. I believe we will enter a electric and hydrogen market in time as we are in a petrol and diesel market previously. You know, the new entrances into the new and used vehicle market, we describe them as disruptors. Existing retail space will start to change, but significantly, we are at a significant point of change for our sector. So finally, I believe this sums up um, where we're at very uh, nicely. You know, I believe we'll never return to what we left in a pre-pandemic market. We're moving very quickly, whether it's the pandemic, this two-year period that we, we've seen accelerate many of these trends and either consumer behaviours, the challenges around productivity, the challenges around vehicle supply, usage of vehicles, distance travelled, etc. The market has changed and it's changed permanently. I, you know, no longer, I, I believe that the uh, there's no better um, acronym that describes our current market as, as this one. Um, you know, we're going to go through periods of volatility. We've certainly got uncertainty in our market, a lot of increasing complexity and an element of ambiguity. So the future landscape will, as I say, never return to pre-pandemic levels. We have re reached a point of inflection with my, many, many dynamics coming together at once as we move towards a more autonomous, electrified, connected and shared industry. And that's it from me. Thank you, Philip. Well, I think it's clear that there are a lot of challenges ahead. And uh, I think in this uh, VUCA, <laughs> let's say, a world, I think it's good to share and to get some views. Uh, just to give you an idea about the poll, um, only one out of seven people that voted say that uh, overproduction will come back as it was before. So most yeah. of the people say one third or even more that uh, they fully agree that the OEMs will uh, go out of this oversupply as they were uh, before and half say that some do, some 
uh, won't. So it clearly will uh, change. I've seen there's quite a lot of questions coming on uh, EVs as well. So we can't avoid this. So we'll take a lot of the EV <laughs> questions again in the uh, the uh, panel. Uh, and then also uh, for you, Philip, thanks. And we'll see you within an hour, let's say, in the panel. Thanks, Philip. See you. Okay.